Libraries across the country are pretty much all the same. They have plenty of books to read, lots of resources, and plenty of peace and quiet. The Ossining Library has all that and so much more with all the programs they have and the Words and Music concert series on Sundays. Looking at your childhood face. The Ossining Library is not just the library. Out of that one guitar? Yeah. It's all in the palm. The community streams. It's developed into a full-on cultural center. Ground control to major tall. Commencing countdown engines on. Tremendous. Where, where is he here? Is he on the East Coast? No, he's in Tacoma now. The library officially opened in 1893 as the Sing Sing Public Library in reference to the state prison just down the road. But it was renamed the Ossining Library in 1901. Still a relatively quiet little town hidden in the shadows of more prominent Westchester communities like White Plains and Tarrytown. Not a lot of people heard of Ossining, mm -hmm. but they certainly heard of Sing Sing. Actually, Ossining didn't become vogue until Mad Men, when the TV show Mad Men with the character living in Ossining now. I'm a huge fan of that show. That must be why, why I keep getting drawn back into it. About a year ago, Alan Marzelli saw this theater and had a vision for a way to utilize the space that would benefit both the library and the community in the Words and Music concert series that began in March of 2011. This was a dream to put on some free concerts. I had no idea it would turn into this 12 months later. I mean, my wife Ellen and I were just going through a scrapbook that we put together over the past year and just flipping the pages. Willie Nile, Aztec Two-Step, Kenny Wyatt, Eric Anderson, and now this. This recent concert and fundraiser hosted a few city musicians, Brooklyn's Joan Osborne and Jack Petrozelli, and Aaron Hill, who resides in Queens. to play these these small theaters in these small towns. I mean, I grew up in a small town in Kentucky, and to have the opportunity to see music in a space like this you know, would have been great. We, we never had anything like this. It was all sort of community theater and, and school productions and stuff, and there really weren't any you know, national touring artists who, who came through. So, so it's great to be able to uh, raise money for something where people in this, in this small community can you know, have this be part of the fabric of, of their daily lives. Especially now, with the economy the way it is, the first thing to go often is music or the arts. To have free concerts, it's perfect. It's cool. You know, it's always nice to play different venues for different reasons, and this place especially has a very nice intimacy about it. And the intimate setting lends itself to a very tuned-in audience that gets to sit back and listen. And me down my day. Often you're playing in noisy bars or restaurants where, with a stage where most of the audience is and to have a venue where people are actually coming to hear music and watch and listen, it's a godsend. That's what every musician wants. This sold out event was used as a fundraiser and the money raised will allow for six free concerts next season beginning in March. By bringing in high profile musical acts, it calls attention to all the other great things going on. And uh, there's cultural programming, film series, classical concerts, there's a jazz series, there's all kinds of things going on. So the next time you're in a public library and you feel the need to tap your feet and get your groove on, Check out the cultural center that the Ossining Library has become, and you'll catch some high-level performances in a very intimate setting. Where we start.